wine gets better with age, I get better with wine. <laughs> okay, guilty. You girls know that's true. <laughs> we do. <laughs> the troubling messages often try to be humorous and appear on a number of products, from baby clothes with mommy drinks because I cry, to wine glasses with mommy's sippy cup, T-shirts reading coffee, hockey mom, wine repeat, and even memes like the most expensive part of having kids is all the wine you have to drink. I think this messaging that is everywhere, um, it normalizes this behavior of drinking to survive parenthood. And it normalizes this idea that like drinking a lot is no big deal. As it turns out, the messaging sadly reflects reality. Kelly Manley turned to alcohol to fit in with her peers, who she observed drinking everywhere at kids' birthday parties, soccer practices, you name it. People would show up to the park with little, um, you know, discreet glasses of wine to have at, you know, 4 p.m. on a play date at the park. You know, you go to the zoo and for a small upcharge, you can buy a flight of beer, not just a beer, but a flight of beer to enjoy while you're pushing your kid around the zoo. And like other events these days, it's going digital, like the Moms Who Need Wine Facebook group. Alcohol has been sold as the ultimate way to decompress, to cope, and to bond with other women. And it's very dangerous. The alcohol industry has certainly played a part. Back in the 90s, it ushered in the so-called pinking of the market making and advertising booze aimed specifically at women. Drink these sweetened, pre-sweetened, gorgeous, um, attractive pink drinks that will um, end you into drinking spirits, drinking pretty wine, drinking wine with names like, you know, uh, French rabbit. And it worked. While historically men consumed the most alcohol, women are now catching up. In the last 15 years, the greatest increase in consumption has been among women in their 30s and 40s. However, because of biological differences, women absorb more alcohol and take longer to metabolize it than men. That means the same amount of alcohol typically damages the female body more than the man's. After drinking the same amount of alcohol, women tend to have higher blood alcohol levels than men, and the effects usually occur more quickly and last longer in women. Alcohol also makes women more susceptible than men to liver disease, heart disease, cancer, and cognitive decline. U.S. health officials recommend women should drink no more than five ounces of wine a day. Canadian health officials go further, saying only two five-ounce glasses per week. This is a women's health issue. It's, in fact, a big public health issue. And it's not just physical. Alcohol affects mental health, too, which is why Kelly gave it up. It just exacerbated my feelings of anxiety and uh, depression, and I felt like I was betraying myself every time I drank. She's not alone. More moms are rejecting mommy wine culture and turning to groups like Sober Mom Squad. Having a safe space where you can talk to other moms about, you know, the questions you're having about alcohol or how difficult it is to navigate in this culture where everyone tells you you need to drink to be a parent um, and not have to justify that you should just be grateful to have kids. Many moms are also saying no because they're concerned about the culture's impact on their child's self-esteem. Most problematic part of it is what is it saying to your kids? Um, Again, if it's, you know, tongue in cheek jokes, like between friends, that's one thing. But when it you're wearing the T-shirt that said mommy needs wine, you know, saying that you have to, you know, I have to drink because you're difficult. Um, I think that leads into something that's even more damaging. So while pop culture and big alcohol try to convince new moms life is better with booze, a growing number are rejecting that message for the sake of their own health as well as their families. Lori Johnson, CBN News.
All right, well, Lori Johnson joins us now. We always appreciate you being here, yeah, Lori. Thank thanks. you. So it's much. a pleasure. Thanks for having me. This rise in the mommy wine culture, what do you think is ultimately responsible? Is it social media or word of mouth? How does this get going to this it's degree? It's kind of a combination of everything. It's sort of a perfect storm. So what's being marketed, the message that's per pervasive in our society today is that drinking wine and being a mom go hand in hand, being a mom of young children, mm -hmm. children who are still in the house, mm -hmm. that you need wine to cope with the pressures of motherhood, that you need wine to connect with other moms, which is so important, you know, wow. that camaraderie, they get together and drink wine. And mm -hmm. this is especially an appealing message for women who may really like wine or may even be addicted to wine and who thought before like, oh, this is a bad thing. You're not supposed to drink wine while you're around your kids uh, but mommy wine culture says yes you are drink wine in the morning ha ha it's so funny <laughs> drink wine let's get together oh and watch our kids and drink wine wow. it's okay if you drink wine at night even a whole bottle everybody does it mm. so this is you know saying that it's okay it even makes you a better mother <laughs> wow so it's would you say it's an enabling alcoholism absolutely and so mm. so many women are finding themselves where they just were maybe doing it just to fit in with other moms are finding yeah. themselves really in the throes of alcoholism. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do get addicted and are having trouble quitting the yeah. habit and they're realizing, hey, I'm drinking too much. But you won't hear that in pop culture because what you see at Target and Walmart and on Amazon and just Google mm -hmm. mommy wine on Etsy and tens of thousands oh, of I'm merchandise sure. comes with the t-shirts, the yeah. wine koozie, the, the little pillows yeah the onesies I mean, it's everywhere yeah. not to mention social media the memes yeah. are endless yeah and Lori I wanted to ask you do you think there's more of a stigma surrounding women in drinking and moms in drinking than dads in drinking you know I think part of mommy wine culture is to get rid of that stigma so for decades mm -hmm. we saw men handling yeah. the pressures of their job by drinking we yep. saw it on tv and in the movies they yep. come home oh i've had a hard day at the office honey pour me a drink <laughs> yeah. give me yeah. make it a double yeah. and yeah. society accepts that so mm -hmm. women are like you know what we can do that too wow. you know we have we have pressures at our job raising children mm -hmm. so we should be able to drink too yeah. so it's kind of like yeah sort of an equality thing but here's the thing our bodies are not equal. Mm -hmm. Our bodies have a different, more difficult time with alcohol than men's. That's just a physical fact. Yeah. And then another thing is the type of work we do is raising children. Mm -hmm. It's different from if you're having stress at the office. That's Let's true. just face it. Yeah, I mean, parenthood, I'm not a parent yet. You guys are. It's 24 seven. It's not something that you can clock into and clock out of. Yeah, so. you know, I, my children are grown and out of the house. <laughs> and when I was raising the kids, there was never alcohol. Mm -hmm. There was never alcohol and mommy yeah. mixed together. We yeah. never drank at social agree arrangements. I mean, it was just really taboo. And you'll hear this even for the older millennials. So mm -hmm. this is a very new thing. This is a thing that's really just started kicking into gear in the last 10 years. Wow. And okay. one thing I appreciate about your story is, and you touched on it briefly, let's talk a little more about it now. How does it affect the kids, the children mm -hmm. who, you know, all the t-shirts, et cetera, et cetera? Do you think it could affect them as they grow older? Absolutely. I mean, we all know children Children yeah. see and hear everything, and children internalize everything. So yeah. anytime a thing happens in a child's life, they think, what did I do to make this thing happen? So here they're thinking, oh, okay, mommy needs to drink because of me. I am difficult. Mm. I am a problem. Mommy yeah. might even be happier if she didn't have to take care of me. Mm. And here's another thing, too. We lead by example. Again, we True. all know this. And so what we're teaching our children and anyone else who's looking is that the way we solve our problems is with alcohol. Mm -hmm. You can better believe the kids are going to imitate that. Yeah. Well, how can we eliminate this wine mom mindset? Well, the main thing is to push back. And I'm happy to report, as I did in the story, that a lot of women are pushing back. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult because it's peer pressure. I mean, everybody's doing True. it. Yeah. And it's really cool. And it's really Really chic and it's difficult to be around all the other moms and say I'm not gonna do this and some moms are like you know what I might have to change friends that's okay mm -hmm. and be in an, a sober group but I think a lot of moms secretly want out of it I think a lot of moms secretly know that this is not a good not thing right. yeah but again 
are having difficulty getting mm -hmm. out of it. This is a snare. It's a trap. A lot of times you just start out with one glass to fit in yeah. and now you're hooked. So Alcoholics Anonymous is a wonderful resource. It's actually Christian based. Mm -hmm. It's a 12 step program. It's been very effective at helping mom deal with their yeah. drinking. Well, before we go, Lori, one more one more thing I wanted to ask you. Obviously, these women are feeling the pressures of parenting. Parenting can be a lot, especially young children. What are some other ways that they can cope with the pressures of parenting? Well, what's, what's really interesting is stopping alcohol actually helps relieve stress and anxiety. Alcohol wow. is a depressant. Yeah. It slows down your brain waves. So uh, actually a lot of women r report having less stress and less anxiety after they stop drinking. But here's the thing, ask for help. Yeah. Women and men who are married and who are parents who both have full-time jobs, the women do an average of 35% more of the household chores and well, the yeah. and the parenting chores. So women really do need help. A lot of times they have difficulty asking for it. Mm -hmm. Other stress relievers, getting off of social media. So true. What a time waster. Goodness. And yeah. you can get on social media and spend two hours and all of a sudden so it's true. gone. Yeah. And it's not good for your mental health. We're mm -hmm. all yeah. we're all learning that. Or at least set limits on your apps so you know true. how long you're, I mean, that could be a start, right? Exactly. Monitor. And again, this is addictive and something that the kids imitate. So. Uh, that's a huge yeah. uh, way to relieve stress. Getting enough sleep. Moms are like, how can I do that? Mm. Maybe cut down on the phone, cut down on yeah. the TV, find True. ways to get help. Mm -hmm. And another great stress reliever is exercise. Yes and amen. Yeah. Yes and amen. So, so uh, and, and talking to other people, yeah. talking it out. Yeah. yeah. Well, Lori, thank you so much for all of your insights. Thank you for this report. And I hope yeah. viewers are encouraged. I didn't feel like I met the quote qualifications to be an alcoholic. I hadn't been drinking since I was young. I wasn't, you know, a party girl, girls gone wild, so to speak. I was just drinking wine in my kitchen. From the outside, Alyssa had life under control. But just below the high profile career and a beautiful family, a struggle lurked beneath the surface. I really was able to continue to tell myself I didn't have a problem. The mommy drinking culture, I feel like has grown significantly in the last 10 to 15 years. But when social media really blew up, it became something that was not just more common, but more accepted. And I would almost say celebrated. They have t-shirts and mugs and different graphics and quotes online about, you know, I'm not drinking alone if my kids are home and there might be vodka in this mug. It makes it more difficult if you're a woman questioning your drinking behaviors because it's easy to look around and say, well, everybody's doing it. Over the years, Alyssa's dependence on alcohol grew. And I remember mornings waking up and realizing that I had a, a function in the evening, whether it was for work or one of my children's schools. I would start to be resentful of that because I knew it would prevent me from starting to drink when I wanted to drink. And then I was also even creating situations where I could justify drinking. I was constantly looking for opportunities to host, host parties, host events, host fundraisers, even a cornhole tournament. Because if I could host something in my home where other people were present, where you would typically drink, I could then justify drinking earlier in the day and drinking all day, because those are events where everybody drinks. Alcohol evolved into a coping mechanism that began to spill over into other areas of her life and family. I now had these three children in school who needed help with homework and wanted to talk about what happened at recess and maybe they were upset about something or they're just having a bad day themselves. And I had no more mental capacity to meet their needs emotionally. I was here and I was present, but I wasn't really available to them because I'd used all of my mental energy at work. I drank to cope with that feeling that I wasn't enough. I wasn't a good enough mom. I was always comparing myself to other, quote, moms. I started to develop these insecurities because I was comparing myself to everyone else. Even so much that I compared myself to other women in the church. You know, here I was, this working mother, loved our church, our kids were very involved at the church, but I didn't sing in the choir, so I must not be Christian enough. So these constant comparisons uh, really grew these feelings of self-doubt and insecurity. How couldn't I get this under control? I'd gone to college. I had two college degrees. I'd secured my dream job. I had the dream husband. I had the dream house. I had the dream family. And yet I couldn't get this drinking under control. So it was this feeling of failure and I couldn't 
stand it. Women would say to me, while I'm working full time, you know, taking care of these three kids, managing a household, they'd say to me, I don't know how you do it. And in my mind, I felt like such a fraud because I wasn't doing it. You know, I had this great front, this great facade, but inside I was dying. One evening while her husband was traveling for work, Alyssa was confronted with the harsh truth of who she had become. He knew that I was drunk at home with our kids and he couldn't do anything about it. We had conversations that I don't remember. And it wasn't until that next morning when he called to talk to me about the night before and he was crying that I really felt like I'm on borrowed time here. I'll never drive drunk. I'd done that. I'll never endanger my children. I'd done that. And I realized I was starting to do things I swore I'd never do. So what's next? Alyssa and her husband met with their pastor, who connected them with a faith-based inpatient substance abuse program. I just fully surrendered everything I was coping with and all the feelings I had. And I was fully transparent and honest about what I was dealing with and just kind of spilled it all and felt like, you know what? I'm not gonna lie anymore. I'm just gonna give it all up. And if, if they can't help me with, and I'm fully honest, then I guess, you know, this is my, my cross to bear. All of us addicts and alcoholics really do want to get it under control. We want to do better. We want to fix it on our own. But that's where the enemy wants us to stay, is believing that we all alone have to fix it by ourselves. Because if we really believe we all alone are in control and can do it on our own, then we don't need God, right? Because it's a disease, I couldn't cure my alcoholism by thinking about it better, by giving it up better, by trying harder any more than a person with cancer can sit on their bed and just will it away. With God's help and determination, Alyssa successfully completed the program. Today, she continues a life of sobriety and helps others through her ministry, This Thorn. When I'm feeling self-doubt and insecure, I have to stop and just ask God to help me, speak to me. It's about prayer. It's about that ongoing relationship, remember? He is a God that is with us all the time and goes before us and knows all our deepest, darkest, ugliest secrets and loves us anyways. I know that the day may be good, it may be bad. I, I can't predict that, right? But I have the confidence that I never had before to engage that life and embrace that life because I have a God with me all the time and I know I'm giving it my best. I'm no longer dependent on this crutch to keep me going. You don't have to be perfect, you're not perfect. But I'm thankful for that and I boast for that imperfection because it allows me to remember the God that I serve and who saved me. It to always depend on Him, not just to keep me sober, but to be the best mom I can be and to be the best wife. And, and it's always there reminding me that I am imperfect, but it's okay. It's from Him for him. You know, so many times we have this misconception that we have to be perfect and we have to get our act together before we come to Jesus. And that is a total lie from the pit of hell because what that really does is it makes us continue to isolate and, and try to figure it out on our own and, and, and truly believe and think that we are in control of our minds, our bodies, our actions. And in some ways we are, but true healing, true freedom only comes when we ask God to intervene, when we invite Jesus into our mess, into the mess. Let him clean up the mess. All you have to do is come to him. He is not looking at you with disgust or disappointment. He's looking at you with affection and an everlasting love. He's looking at you saying, I have so much more for you, my dear son or my dear daughter. This alcoholism, this addiction, whatever it is that you are trying to cope with the hardships of life with, that is actually not doing anything good for you and I have something so much more. I have something better for you, and it's my love. It's my love. So my friend, if you are watching this and, and you can, you're comparing yourself, you're like, wow, I'm like Alyssa, whether it's alcohol, 
or, or drugs or pornography or uh, anything that you're trying to cope with that just pushes down your emotions and pushes down your feelings, God has better for you. And I just believe that today is the day that he's asking you to help. He's asking you to cry out for help. He's asking you to invite him in. He's asking you to be transparent with him. He's not afraid of your deepest, darkest secrets. He knows them because he's your heavenly father and he knows you. So pray with me right now to just invite God into your mess like never before. Posture your heart and your mind today to invite your heavenly father into your life like never before. Just pray with me right now. Heavenly father, Jesus, I need your help. God, I am done trying to get rid of this disease, this addiction to alcohol and drugs and pornography and all the other things that I've been running to for so long to cope with my emotions, to cope with the hardships of life. Jesus, I'm done doing that. Jesus, I believe that you are my healer. It is by your love, Jesus, that I can be truly set free, that I can, the chains of addiction can fully be broken only by your love and by your Holy Spirit. So right now, Jesus, I invite you in. Come into my life, Jesus. Come into my mess. I am a mess, but I believe that you love me and you died on the cross for me, Jesus. And because of your love, because of the power of your Holy Spirit, I can be made new, free from addiction. So Jesus, will you do that today? Just like, just what you did in Alyssa's life, will you do it in my life? I am open, I am surrendered, I lay this at your feet. I surrender myself at the foot of the cross. Have your way, Lord Jesus, and your matchless name. I pray all of this. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Friends, if you just prayed that prayer of just surrendering and just letting God into your mess, please tell somebody that you did. Give us a call 1-800-700-7000. We've got amazing resources about addiction and how to walk out this faith journey um, that are totally free. So please give us a call, that number on your screen. We also have some prayer warriors that can just continue to just lift you up in prayer. God bless you. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley Key. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so we can reach more people with encouraging content like you just watched and so you never miss a beat. See you next time and God bless.